This is DLFM Online Radio Station Chicago Dimensión Latina FM Radio TV Baja nuestra aplicación a través de tu iPhone o Android. Búscanos como Dime la FM. Búscanos en TuneIn Radio como Dimensión Latina FM y visita nuestra página web dimelafm.com. Hello, this is Elsa Prado, and I am having a great program today for Breast Cancer Awareness. Um, we have a great guest today who's really going to show us some great pointers, some information that will probably benefit a lot of people as um, they go through some of these uh, situations with uh, breast cancer. And I know that... Um, when uh, our guest talks about this um, you can take notes or get gather some information so that you use um, all of the information that you're receiving to the best of your benefit or if you have family or friends that are going through this process you can pass it on and help somebody out as we are doing the uh, october uh, month which is breast cancer awareness month and most of us hope to get that mammogram scheduled at some point this month so that we can take care of ourselves. I am going to introduce you to Annette Nieves, and she is my guest today. Um, she is a very, very strong warrior here, and uh, she has uh, she is a professional photographer, and she's traveled to Cuba and Mexico, plus uh, she's done all these other great things. So I want to wel welcome you, Annette. Thank you for being on Wings of Love. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I really wanted to make sure that this month we talk about how important it is to get your mammogram. What can you tell people about you and what it represents? So um, it's extremely important. Um, I personally uh, was diagnosed um, back last year in August and um, actually was incident to um, uh, a surgery that I had to do. So part of it, I think, is also what's even more important than the mammogram is to do self-care and to do self-examination. Mm -hmm. You know your body best, better than anybody. And if something doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, you need to call your doctor. Right. And that's kind of what jump-started you know, uh, me. Um, so, um, I actually had an issue with my left breast. I had like some discharge and it just, I'm like, okay, that doesn't even feel right or is right. right. So I called my doctor and I went in for a visit and that just prompted, uh, a second visit. And they thought it was like basically a, a papilloma that was inflamed in the milk duct. Mm -hmm. So I was referred to a surgeon who said, oh, we can definitely take care of that. And during that procedure was the doctor did some tissue sampling. And about two weeks later, the samples come back. So the papilloma was benign, but the tissue sampling came back uh, positive for two different types of cancer, oh, wow. uh, ductal carcinoma and lobular carcinoma. So that changed everything and kind of, you know, after that, you know, it's kind of like a Charlie Brown cartoon because all you hear is wah, 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 wah. Right. Nothing makes sense at that moment, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so I go see the doctor and she's like, you know, we need to definitely, you know, get this mammogram and ultrasound done. Um, and basically I was told that form of cancer is kind of just treated with radiation and, and we're done with that. So to me, that wasn't enough. I'm like, okay, how do we, first of all, it was incident to a surgery. How do we not, how do we know it's not anywhere else? It's not in the other breast. What form did I, do I have? Is it treatable? I had like all of these questions in my head 
and you know I, I needed answers so that I could you know make an informed decision so in that sense it was really about self-advocating you know for yourself and right. for myself exactly and I guess that um, situation just prompted me to um, just kind of gather some thoughts later and I'm like if I have to share my story with someone first of all I would you know make sure that I would recommend you know give yourself that self you know exam when you're taking a shower mm -hmm. if something doesn't feel right you know doesn't look right call your doctor you know get that mammogram because early detection you know most you know caught early you can you know have a form of treatment what can you suggest to the people that are really leery about like uh, touching their body and it's like what am i looking for like, what should I look for? Or, you know, how do I know I'm even going through to the right place? So, you know, honestly, you know, rely on your doctor. You know, if uh, you know your body, if you just feel kind of like a, a lump or a swelling, most breaths just have to be pretty smooth for the most part. But when you're showering and, you know, if you feel something, you notice something, call your doctor, right. you know, ask for that mammogram. Plus you should be getting that yearly mammogram. You know, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer mm -hmm. in their lifetime. True. It's that, it's that prevalent. And that's true. And how many women have to do the needle biopsies just to make sure that whatever's in there is not going to be malignant. Exactly. And so if you feel something, the only way for diagnosis is really to have a mammogram done, an ultrasound done. Um, and then if something warrants a, a needle biopsy, you know, and that's the really the only way to be able to be diagnosed. Mm -hmm. Now you, uh, when we spoke before, you know, you kind of, you know, made a point of saying, you know, sometimes the mammogram doesn't catch certain things so you are like you know if it weren't for the ultrasound i think yeah that, that merits so, some attention so, you know yeah and here so the other thing is really the best form like if the the mammogram misses something or the ultrasound misses something you know demand that mri the breast mri is the one that's going to give you the best diagnosis um, because the ultrasound, you know, missed it. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't for the doctor that did tissue sampling, they would have missed it altogether. Right. And, you know, so then when I, when, when the doctor, um, gave me the diagnosis to say I had breast cancer, that's when I'm like, what other, you know, what, what else is there right. that, that can be done so that I know, you know, so that right. I know what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? What are my options? Radiation can't be, you can't just tell me I'm going to have radiation and that's it without me knowing if, if it's anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So then at that point, I think because I self-advocated so loudly, yeah. my doctor said, okay, listen, let, then let's have a conversation here. Yeah. Um, here are your options. Your options are do nothing. Mm -hmm. um, your options are, um, you know, uh, radiation, um, a mastectomy or a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. And I said, but I need to understand all of that. I, you know, right now, honestly, I may be physically here, but I really am having an out-of-body experience. Correct, yeah. So, so I say that, you know, another thing with that is don't come alone, you know, bring someone with you. Mm -hmm. Bring, you know, you need to bring a, a piece of paper to make some notes and stuff because you're physically gonna be in that office, but I guarantee you emotionally and mentally, you're kind of looking You're at yourself there. from up yeah. above, you know? And so I, I honestly believe bring someone with you, someone that you know can, you know, be your second set of eyes and ears. And it's like just help you. Super overwhelming is the is what I'm picking up on. It has to be so overwhelming that you lose yourself and oh, you know, which direction you're going. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I think that the stuff that you're mentioning all are very good uh, pointers, uh, very good, um, very good advice more than anything, because um, we can't take anything for granted, especially not when it comes to our bodies. 
uh, not when we're making these huge, huge decisions that are going to impact us for life. And Absolutely. I think that just sharing it with the community, sharing it with people is going to help so much. Um, do you know how many people put it off because they say, I don't have insurance for work, but yet there's programs that will give you a mammogram for free? Yeah, as a matter of fact, there's plenty of, you know, and, and I didn't i hadn't fortunate to have insurance right yeah but i know even family members i have friends that you know they fi are financially struggling and may not even have insurance and in doing some research for them and just to gather information there are um you know there's the national mammography program they give you free diagnostic over at swedish hospital yes um the <laughs> illinois breast can breast and cervical cancer program they do free screening uh mammograms they'll do free uh breast exams and if you're diagnosed under their program they will help you with treatment so you have to obviously all of these you kind of have to qualify but those programs are really like catered to uh women that you know are financially struggling and or do not have insurance mm -hmm. so not having insurance um is no excuse um, it, it really isn't. But a lot of people don't know that these resources are out there. Are, are, they're out there uh, and they're available. And that's yeah, why that's I think really it's available. so important that we talk about this and that we bring it out to the community because a lot of people will say, oh, well, people of color, a lot of times they neglect their bodies, they neglect themselves. But a lot of times it's just lack of knowledge. Right. You know, a lot that, of times. Lack of knowledge, uh, fear. But fear is not going to take away the diagnosis. You know, right. really what you're trying, you're delaying by fear is treatment. Right. You know, and the more that you wait, the harder it is to be treated because mm -hmm. there's so many different forms of breast cancer. Um, so that's another thing is, um, you know, cancer itself, all it is is really that the cells are malignant. Right. Uh, and if, you know, like with mine, I, I had ductal and lobular uh, carcinoma. If left untreated, so those are kind of in a pocket and left untreated, if those pop, then they spread, they can spread to any part of the body. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, you know, that could be days or weeks or months. They don't really know. There's no real study on it. Right. But it's early detection regardless, you know, right. whether you're at stage one or stage four there is a form of treatment it's better to do something than nothing you know right and, and catch it don't on time. let fear yeah exactly and catch it on time more than anything you know that you know even if you are a stage two you're, you're still gonna be okay you're gonna be able to get through this it's a curable uh form of cancer from what i understand there's there's so many different you know technology nowadays i mean i i you know, my mom just brought that up because, you know, we've had breast cancer like in the family that we know of and mm -hmm. just the way treatment or lack of treatment or non-treatment back then to now, it's it's just amazing. Right. But, you know, really um, look into these programs. There's um, I'm I'm huge with uh, the um, the American Cancer Society yes. is an amazing website. There's many different cancers that you can look up there, but that's an amazing website in the sense that when you're when you want to know a little bit more, like the details, mm -hmm. there's even a, a a section in there, and they will help you read your pathology report. Oh, nice! Um, the different types of cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, whatever you know. So just cancer across the board. But there's their researchers are so detailed that it's it's all this information and i think when you're ready that's another thing is educate yourself right you know even if you have to have someone to sit next to you to help you when you're ready you have to find strength within yourself to be ready right. also because you really need to walk this path as clear-headed as you can because you don't want to miss something you don't want to miss an opportunity you don't want to miss the fact that maybe you didn't connect with that doctor maybe you really need a second opinion 
you know. Absolutely. And I think it, it warrants a second opinion. If you just feel like so overwhelmed and you're like, I can't believe this is happening to me. Go get the second opinion. So Absolutely. at least you know, okay, this these these doctors are telling me the same thing. And you don't feel right. like, you know, what if this, you know, what if it's wrong? What if this doesn't exist? What if, You know what I mean? That you go through yeah. so much emotional um feelings about the whole entire thing and about you know having to do something to your body you know yeah and find it within yourself to make a list of questions too. absolutely um yes. so the questions that you want to ask your doctor is like okay doctor like what type of cancer do i have what stage am i um why are you recommending that type of therapy or why are you recommending that type of surgery or what are my options is it only chemo is it only radiation is it only surgery or can i have a combination like you know write something down and you know if you can't get yourself to it because i'll tell you it's it's not easy no, regardless at whatever imagine. stage it's yeah. not easy and you know like i said you may be physically sitting in a chair but your mind is like elsewhere yes. your emotions are elsewhere i was you know constantly just very emotional about everything you know but <clears throat> rely on a friend rely on a sister or a brother mm -hmm. someone that can you know be supportive right there's an organization called gilda's club okay and i absolutely love them they do offer um I love them because they offer support for the whole family. Wonderful. So if you have little ones, yes. if you have teenagers, your significant other, anybody that's affected by your cancer diagnosis can come to them in a support setting. Right. Um, they offer, they're the only ones that I know of that actually do offer support for caretakers. Okay. So someone that's taking care of you, they're the only ones. Um, they also have a bereavement group. Where are they um, located? Do you know? So, th so you can actually look them up online because the nice thing about they're available like in, in all over the state. Different areas of the. Correct. Okay. So in Chicago, the main one, Gilda's Club is on Wall Street, but they have an affiliate at Northwestern Hospital. Okay. At St. Elizabeth Hospital in the south side, in the north side. And then a lot of these places because of COVID and because obviously when you're diagnosed, you, your immune system is compromised. It's virtual too. Okay. Um, they have cooking classes, yoga classes, meditation. And for the Hispanic community, they do offer support in Spanish too. Wonderful. And also for the LGBT community. Right. So they're, the nice thing also with them that I was going to get to is remember the list that I was telling you that maybe create a list. They will help you create a list and say, hey, here, let's sit together. Here's a list of questions that you can ask your doctor. They go that far mm -hmm. to really help you. So I think that they're amazing, you know, support group. Totally. And I think that even counseling or some kind of therapy is probably very beneficial um probably in a partner situation or a husband wife uh situation i think that that also helps your partner or your spouse have a better understanding of what you're going through at that particular time rather than the other party not having a clue about what to do with you because that does happen to in in partnerships you know the the other party will be like i have no idea what to do i don't know the first thing about breast cancer i don't know you know how to help her or you know and in some instances mm -hmm. it's men you know mm -hmm. share mm -hmm. with us and they don't how this can also uh be something that could happen to a man yeah absolutely that's exactly what i was going to say breast cancer can and does occur in men too right because so. it's genetic and if you have the gene for it and there's also genetic testing that you could do for your kids I, mm -hmm. I, I know of uh, several friends that did the genetic testing. What do you know about the genetic testing? The kind so of that was you? something. Yeah. So that was something that actually was offered to me. Um, insurance doesn't cover, at least my insurance didn't cover it. Mm -hmm. um, but with the genetic testing, it would give you um, deeper information. Sure. If you have daughters or sons, whatever, because it does, it can happen it would actually be able to let you know if you have that 
that gene. Mm -hmm. And if you do have the gene, then your children should get tested. So in my situation, I don't have biological children, but I have three sisters. And for me, it was important enough that whatever information, the most information that I could gather to be able to help them and their children and uh, as a resource, absolutely. So I had it done. And as a matter of fact, um, one of the genes that they look for is breast cancer can trigger ovarian cancer. Oh, wow. So that was something that they wanted to make sure because if I carried that gene, then I was going to be able to have the option to probably have a hysterectomy. Mm -hmm. Um, With my uh, genetic testing, it did show that I had an 18% chance of breast cancer returning in the next 10 years. Mm, So that was another kind of, you know, a feather in the hat to say, okay, so here's some more information just going to help me make what you know, and with partnership with my doctor on what I think is going to be my treatment plan choice. Exactly. And not only that, that thing about just making a really good informed decision when, when you're going through all these steps, just being well informed, knowing what direction you're going, and then also looking forward to, okay, how is this going to impact my life down the road? Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to just find it you know kind of you got to dig deep Uh, you really have to dig deep i i I say to gather all this information and you may not understand all of it because even present day so um october 1st when i you know came home from my surgery um i and i'm still like reading and learning and i'm like oh my gosh i didn't even know that you know but you're not you're not 100 percent there um you you just can't be you're such an emotional mess but i have i could personally say that i have an amazing you know family support system um you know a lot of things you know they could just see in you even though you don't want to share and talk you know but just knowing that you know uh, i'm my mom walking in and you know she could see that i was like restless and you know you know um, agitated and whatever, mm-hmm. and my mom would walk in and she's like, Alexa, play meditation music, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, of course. Even though I didn't want to connect, but I'll tell you, like little things like that, you know, they, they make a difference. Yeah, everything makes a difference. I really believe that um, the better we handle the situation, the better the outcome, because I think it's devastating when a person lets it go and then it's too late or, you know, it's gone to stage three or stage four and then you get to the point of no return and then what do you do, you know? So Mm -hmm. making sure that you really take that care, that self-care about making a point of doing it annually every year, put it in the calendar, make sure that it gets done. And if you don't have, you know, exactly the insurance, there's still resources available that can do it for free and it will save your life in in the event that something does pop up or or they find a little nodule or they find whatever that can be removed early right and and you know in sharing i'm usually a private person but when i got diagnosed at one point i said you know what i need to share to help raise awareness you know and in doing so um a a friend uh kind of heard the story and it triggered something in her and she's like you know what I haven't had a mammogram and I don't even remember when she went to go get um, her mammogram because I shared my story and it turned out that she was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer there you go but and later she came back and she said you know because you shared I really believe you saved my life Right. You ended up being her angel at that point because um, had you not brought it up or said something about it, she may, you know, she may have gotten to stage four. And then, you know, you would, you know, witness a very sad story, which is what we as women and even like I said, for men, we need to share all this information, make sure that we bring out this awareness um, and not just in October, make sure that we have this uh, awareness uh, awareness going on the, throughout the whole year. And the best gift we could give ourselves is the gift of health. 
because without health, we have nothing. Even if we have nice homes and cars and money and all that stuff, when it comes to your health, if you don't have the health, you have nothing. So I think yeah. that's the key uh, to even us talking about this. And I really appreciate you sharing uh, your story with us because you're making a difference. And every time you share the story, there will be somebody that's gonna, you know, the light will go on and will say, you know what, I probably should should go schedule it and, and get tested and go check and make sure or just do my um, exam while I'm in the shower or whenever I get a chance and look for right. lumps. You know, yeah. or look for drainage, like you said, or look for any spots, anything that doesn't look normal to a person that, you know, you have a red light telling you, you know what, get this looked at, get it looked at and make sure that you're going to be OK. What other what other uh, tips or advice, uh, given the situation that's been really hard uh, to go through and to undergo? What is some of the most valuable pointers right now that you could give our, our community and the people that are watching? Um, I would say the big one too is if you have been diagnosed, align yourself with some kind of support group. Right, right. Um, I, I think it's huge. Um, you can talk to your doctor. You can ask to speak with the social worker. You can tap into any of the, you know, pro, you know, organizations that you know, that I recommended, you know, that, and, and I say that because I have tapped into them. Right. And, and they have helped me. So I think the biggest thing is find a support system, you know, within your family, even though, you know, you may have a brother, sister, mom, brother, you know, whatever that is willing to help you, but they don't have the professional tools. You know, right. they can come and hug you. They can come and kiss you. They can come and tell you, you know what, faith over fear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Send you prayers and it all helps. It all helps. But yes. You really do need a professional support system. Right. And other women that are going through this also need to know that other women are there for them when they're mm -hmm. also going through the same situation. They also will feel better knowing, you know, I, 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 there's someone's in my corner. Somebody's, you know, you know, kind of looking out for me too while I go through this and kind of keeping me with my head screwed on. Cause like yeah. you said, your head isn't screwed on. You, you know, your mind's going to be probably running a thousand miles an hour and you're not all there. So it's mm -hmm. so important that you have that front to keep you like, you know, and nudge you a little bit. Hey, what are you oh. doing? What are you talking about? You know, let's get this done. You know, let, push you a little bit, you know, get you through that, you know, the hurdle and just support one another through these things that are just so hard to go through. So, so hard. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think if we work together, like, you know, you, you know, um, decided to, to put this program on, but even like sharing, you know, uh, messages or hey you know having the conversation right, right? Yeah. um so i think together we can help you know um uh, bring help and hope to women you know absolutely newly diagnosed and and going through it right and like you said it takes a, a long time to be able to get to a certain point where you could actually be okay with it you know mm -hmm. exactly so exactly. What, what words do you want to say in closing so in words, um, I would say, you know, faith over fear. You got to have faith and you got to believe. And I believe in miracles. I really believe that when you pray and you really do it with your heart and people pray for you, I really do believe there's a lot of healing that takes place. A lot of healing. Yeah, and then I, do, then I do too. We see yeah. miracles. Yeah. I want to say thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be with us here on Wings of Love. And uh, we're always looking for ways to help the community to raise awareness in different areas because we know our families are the ones that are so impacted by these things that happen to us. And if you're a mom, you know, I've seen pregnant moms, you know, with a baby on the way and then they get diagnosed with something like this and it's, you know, really devastating. So I have seen different things happen and we can't ever take it for granted that nothing will ever happen to us. Uh, just the opposite. I think we should always be a little bit on 
on guard trying to make sure that we take care of all these di- these different things so we can prevent at least the prevention piece of it absolutely absolutely well thank you thank you for having me um i can share with you um through email like the resources and yes, absolutely. you know share with your with and we could put some links on the uh, post mm-hmm. we could put some links on the post okay Absolutely. Thank, thank you so you. much. And I want to say uh, thank you to all the people that are watching us. This is my new time slot, 6, six to 6.30 going forward on Wednesdays to our community and our public. I had been uh, do- doing the program on Saturday for a very long time. <laughs> and sometimes it gets a little bit, uh, you know, the change will kind of uh, throw off some stuff for people. But just know that I'm still here and we are still working on bringing all these resources to the community. Thank you everybody for listening and for being here with us on Wings of Love. We are air on air through Radio Dimension Latina, tu radio por internet. Thank you very much. And with this, bye. I say goodbye and so <laughs> bye bye. en Chicago y el mundo. Dimensión Latina FM. Solo música buena.